Shalom and welcome to Heart to Heart, right here in your favorite Christian television station, OCN. That is Open Door Communication Network. We are so glad that you have joined us, and I have with me one of my daughters in the Lord, Agnes, Teacher Agnes. How are you? Blessed. blessed. Welcome. Welcome to Heart to Heart. Amen. Amen. And uh, we've been teaching on the Holy Spirit. He's my favorite uh, favorite one. I love him so dearly. Um, I call him my best friend. He's really, really, really my best friend. I'm telling you. We've been teaching on him, and um, we've been going through the names of the Holy Spirit uh, as the scripture shows us. And now we're dealing with the divine names. Uh, the, the one we are talking about right now is the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit as the Spirit of God. And we find this in Romans chapter 8, verse 14. I want us to read that. Before we do, let's just pray. Father, we just say thank you so much by your spirit that you minister to the hearts of everyone that is watching. Whatever they are, whatever country, whatever nation, wherever, whatever they are, whatever age, whatever creed, Lord, and I pray by your spirit that you touch the hearts of the people, that they will never be the same that they will be so glad that they have tuned in. And thank you, Lord, for your blessings that's flowing through and around the world. Thank you for your anointing that destroys yokes. Yes. We yield completely to you, Holy Spirit. Just have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's read uh, Romans chapter 8. Agnes, teacher, Agnes, can you just go ahead and read um, verse 14? Let's read for, uh, 14 first. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Well, I want to stress on the Spirit of God. We're dealing with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. It's very important to note that phrase, the Spirit of God, not the Spirit from God, the Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. See, John 4, 24, Jesus said that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is a spirit, and without spirit, God is not God. So when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we are dealing with God's spirit, not spirit from God, God's spirit himself. So this is the spirit of God himself, and the Holy Spirit is God himself not a force, not a thing, not an influence. Yes, the way he operates, you will sense a lot of changes in, your, in the atmosphere, like you are sensing the anointing of God wherever you are. That is the way he is. As a matter of fact, we dealt also with his name, that spirit, that in Greek and Hebrew is likened to the wind, and also we know he is the breath of God. Likened to the wind, we see that you can see the uh, effects of wind. You can even hear the sound of the wind. So is the Holy Spirit. You can, you can hear his voice, and you want to hear his voice. You want to understand how he speaks to you. It's very, very important. And this scripture we just read now, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are God's children. Let me read from another scripture, another version. <clears throat> it says, um, for the New International, it says, for, let's see, this is, uh, let me start with, um, what? Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. I want another translation. I have four of them here. Let me read from the New American Standard. It says, for all who are being led. I love that what being led so it's not a one-time deal it's a continuous thing for all who are being led by the spirit of god these are god's children being led so you want the holy spirit of god to lead you all the time that's what he wants to do he wants to lead you when it's um uh in your place of work in your business with your children with your spouse he he, he wants to lead you he wants to lead you into the truth about, about the situation. 
So you don't have to guess. He wants to lead you. Okay? I love that being led. Amen. What do you have to add to that? I love being led by the Holy Spirit because when you're led by the Holy <coughs> Spirit, then you know you won't make mistakes because you're being led to <coughs> do what God is calling you to do. The call on your life as you're being led into that gift, that calling, <coughs> that direction, then you know that the Holy Spirit is the one doing it. It's not you, but it's the Holy Spirit <coughs> that is doing all things mm -hmm. as the Lord has led him to guide us, to direct us Amen. in those areas. Even as I never knew I was called to even <coughs> be a teacher, I was led to teach my daughter. I was led into the school to teach these children. And I thank God because I answered the call <coughs> as I was led into the plan and purpose that God had for my life. Just as well as for all of you others that are out there, as you are being led by the Holy Spirit, take heed and do what you're called to do. And take heed to speak when you need to speak. Because then you know when the Holy Spirit, then you're on the right track. Do what the Lord has called you to do. As the Holy Spirit is our helper, he's our comforter, he's our teacher, he's our all in all. As Bishop even was speaking, as the Spirit of God, and even as he breathed on us, even in the beginning, he breathed life into Adam. And as he breathed life into us, we are to take heed to what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do because it is the Spirit of God. Can you mm. read um, verses 26 through 28 of the same chapter 8? Okay. He leads us even to pray. Yes. Likewise, oh, go ahead, read that one. Please. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groaning, which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that in all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. So he helps us. Amen. Because it's, when it says weak, it's yes. not that we are weak physically. We are not all knowing. God is all knowing. Amen. The Holy Spirit is God himself. And he wants to help you to pray the perfect prayer. It did not say we don't know how to pray. It says we don't know what to pray all the time. You know, I'm looking at the things happening in France right now. The, mm -hmm. the terrorists are attacking France. I believe we have over 169 people dead. Mm -hmm. And we see all the, all the terror going on. That's what the Bible says in the last days. These things are not coincidental. The enemy wants to attack the world. The enemy wants to attack even the body of Christ. The enemy thinks that it wants to win, that it's going to win, but it's not going to win. Now how can you begin to pray for those situations? By allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you even in the prayer. We yes. have some people from France in our, in our church and this morning I spoke to one of the family members and we are thanking God that none of the family members were affected. But we also pray for those family members that were affected. The enemy is out there to steal, to kill, to destroy. How do you handle this? Through prayer, by allowing the Holy Spirit to pray through you. And that's what the Bible is saying. I want to read that verse 26 from the New International. It says, in the same way, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Holy Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans the words cannot express. I know, Agnes, I know you're an intercessor. Can you expand as the Lord leads you on this section? Well, even as the Holy Spirit leads you into intercession, sometimes it may not be 
when you want it to happen, when you're out busy and taking care of things, you have to stop what you're doing and take heed to what the Holy Spirit is leading you. That's right. At times, there's times that the Holy Spirit will wake me up at 3 o'clock in the morning. That's right. And I need to pray because you don't know what is out there. Mm -hmm. I even had one day I was praying as the Holy Spirit woke me up praying in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. As I was praying in the Spirit, I thank God I took heed because I had a friend call me and she told me, Agnes, I know you were praying because she said she went, her and her children were in her vehicle, they were driving, and a truck took a red light mm. and almost hit her and her children in that car. I thank God that I was obedient mm -hmm. to intercede when the Holy Spirit woke me up to pray. There is even times that the Holy Spirit, you're going out to take care of something, you're going out to do, to do something. The Holy Spirit may tell you, stay at home. Mm -hmm. There was an, another time recently, I, was, I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. to pray as I was praying. And then after that, I got up at still at 8 o'clock, I was still praying. And then I even received a text if I was going to be going somewhere. And I responded and I said, no, the Holy Spirit has me praying right now. I need to intercede in behalf of whatever it is that the Lord wants me to pray. And I asked the Lord, Holy Spirit, show me what it is. And I happened to be a dear sister in the Lord. And I thank God I took heed and interceded as the Holy Spirit was leading me into intercession to pray in behalf of this sister. And thank God that today all is well Amen. in the name of Jesus. Because there was no other way I would know unless the Holy Spirit is leading me and guiding me and directing me and what to pray for and how to pray. And so you talked about... Likewise, the Spirit also makes uh, helps in our weaknesses. Mm, yes. But we do not know what we should pray for. So we are talking about the Holy Spirit using our vocal cords, and that is praying in the Spirit, yes. not just in understanding. And uh, Teacher Agnes, you talked about praying in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's so critical because she did not know what to pray at the time. No. She just knew that the Holy Spirit was staring up in her, and she didn't know what to pray. So what did she do? She yielded her vocal cords, and the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. began to pray through her in an unknown tongue. Yes. That is what it means to pray in the Spirit, in an unknown tongue, yes. allowing the Holy Spirit to pray that which is the mind of the Father. And every one of you that's out there that's a believer, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in a new tongue, and yes. you can also begin to intercede in the Spirit, which is a way of praying in that heavenly language that God gives to you when you yield yourself to Him. That is the only way you can pray that which is the mind of the Father, for what you don't know that's happening. But the Holy Spirit knows. And the Holy Spirit wants to use you to stand in the gap for your family members, for your children, grandchildren. And it, just like she said, she got up in the, in, the, in the night. I do that. But I'm so happy to have one of the members here, one of my children here, to, to share with you. This is not something that is for a bishop or a pastor or a prophet. It's for every believer. God wants to use you to push back the hands of the enemy. I think about Prophet Daniel, how he stood his grounds against the attack of the enemy upon God's people for 21 days. He was praying. He was interceding. The same thing Prophet Elijah did the same thing. There was havoc going on in the land and he stood his grounds and began to pray and said there will be no rain because he wanted the people to repent. God wants to use you to break every bondage of the enemy in your family, in your own life, yes. with your spouse, with your children. We don't have to put our hands on our head and cry wolf. We can actually tap into the spiritual realm and begin to push back the hands of the enemy. Yes. I want you to read uh, Jude chapter 1, verse mm -hmm. 20, talking about praying 
in the spirit, which is praying in tongues. Praying in the spirit. Let's read some some of this. Chapter 1, that's only chapter, verse mm -hmm. 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holiest faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So when you are also praying in, in it says praying, yes. praying, praying. Mm -hmm. When you are doing this, you're also building yourself up. You're energizing your spirit mind. You're getting stronger. And God wants that for you. But not only that, I'm telling you there are things that are happening in your own life, with your children, with your grandchildren, with your spouse. You don't even know what is the root cause of it. But the Holy Spirit knows everything. Yes. There are things that happen from grandparents, great-grandparents, that are affecting people that you love. You don't know what it is, but the Holy Spirit knows. And the only way to combat these things is by praying in the Spirit. That's what Romans 8, 26 says. He is our helper. The areas that we are weak, what does it mean? We do not know all things because we are not God. That is the limitation right there. And the Holy Spirit takes charge. He takes charge of that limitation. That's what it means by the weaknesses or the infirmities. It's not sickness or disease. It's just that we are limited in being all-knowing because we are not God. But the Holy Spirit is God. And all he's requiring of us is to yield our vocal cords to him. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to read a couple of uh, scriptures there. Uh, I'm going to read verse 4, and then you're going to also go down and read verse 14. Okay. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies <coughs> the church. 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prayers, prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. See? That's what it means by praying in the spirit. Now, let me read. You have amplified. Let me read from amplified. No, I have okay. the Okay. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit, by the Holy Spirit within me, prays. But my mind is unproductive. It bears no fruit and helps no one. I want to stress, if I pray in tongues, my spirit, by the Holy Spirit that's in me, prays. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. So the real you is your spirit man. Mm -hmm. And your spirit man taps into the Holy Spirit that abides in you. So when you begin to yield yourself to pray in the spirit, in other words, allowing your spirit man to pray, your spirit man is perfect. And he has the Holy Spirit. That's dwelling in you. And the Holy Spirit knows the mind of God. Yes. Because he is God. He knows exactly everything that's happening in that situation. So he knocks at the door of your spirit man and says, wake up, get up, pray for this person. Mm -hmm. And when you begin to train your, your spirit man by hearing the word like you are doing right now, that's part of training your spirit man. Yes. You will begin to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit calling on you to pray for situations. And not crying wolf, not picking up phone, not texting, but you, you, you get a lot and begin to pray. He will use you more and more and more. And you begin to push back the hands of the enemy over your children, over your grandchildren, over your loved ones. He can trust you to stand in the gap like Daniel did, like Elijah did, like many men and women of God, like we are talking about. We experience these things. And it works. God wants to do a whole lot in your family and release his blessing, his glory in your family. And you can be the one to bring it to pass by praying in the spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of God. You want yes. to share something else on that area? Yes, I was sitting here and the Holy Spirit remind me that when you're interceding and you're praying in the spirit, mm -hmm. it doesn't always have to be someone else. It can be you. Yes. And you need to make sure that you're praying because you don't know what it, the situation is. Mm -hmm. But if you take heed as you're led by the Holy Spirit to pray in the spirit 
and build yourself up, but also making intercession for the situation. One day I was woken up as the Holy Spirit and praying in the Spirit. And as I continued to pray in the Spirit, I was going to go somewhere. And my, this was a situation with my ex-husband. And his mother was passing away, and she kept asking for me. And my ex-sister-in-law called me, and she said, Agnes, Mom is asking for you. And I had to take heed, and I had to listen to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit told me, don't go. And my daughter kept telling me, Mom, everyone in the family wants to see you. And I said, but I have to take heed to what the Holy Spirit is telling me. And the Holy Spirit told me, don't go. And the family called me and everyone, and I said, you know, right now I'm not able to make it. Another time I will go when I'm led to go as the Holy Spirit leads me. The moment in time they didn't understand me, but I know one day they will. And I remember I didn't go. And my daughter said as she was coming back home, her dad was so upset, even as the family members were all asking for me. But I was in the family for many years. And he was very upset. He wasn't serving God. He had backslid. And she said that he even had showed her a weapon. And mm -hmm. I thank God. Mm -hmm that I took heed mm -hmm. as the Holy Spirit woke me up because that was saving my life. Amen. And who's to even know, even maybe my daughters. Mm -hmm. But I'm thankful. I'm so grateful for the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God that knows all things Amen. ahead of time mm -hmm. and stop me from going. I mean, in the time after the Lord made a way where it was time for me to go and see my ex-mother-in-law before she passed away and even had me there at her side when she went on to be with the Lord because I led her to the Lord. I knew that there would be a time, but I didn't know when mm -hmm. until the Holy Spirit showed me when and told me when to speak. That's very important. Take heed as the Holy Spirit is leading you Amen. and guiding you and directing you and know when to speak and when not to speak Amen. and know what to speak and how much to speak. So the Holy Spirit wants to lead us. Yes. He wants to lead us in every, every situation. Yes. Not some, every situation. Yes. Now, let, 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 let me say this. Jesus came and paid the price and died for us to redeem us. Yes. And he said, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. How can we have abundant life if he did not provide for one to be with us? Yes. That will help us. That's why he said to the disciples, it's important, it's expedient that I go to the Father, that I may petition the Father yes. to send you the Holy Spirit. Yes. Because when he comes, he'll be a helper, he'll be a comforter. And he has come for everyone that's a believer. He lives in us. He's our helper. You just heard the descriptions of some of the testimonies that has happened with Teacher Agnes here. He is here to help us. Yes. He's here to lead you. He's here to direct you in every area of your life. Even as something like, don't go to that gathering. Yes. Don't go now. At a later time, she went. And when she went, there was no challenges. She went at the appointed time as she was able to hear the Holy Spirit lead her. That's what this is talking about. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. He is God. And I want to pray right now for those of you that do not know Jesus. You see, the Holy Spirit of God is the Spirit of Christ himself. So you need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yes. To be able to be filled with the Spirit of God. So that you can be able to begin to be led by him to have this abundant life. Pray this simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus came and died for me. He resurrected that I may have eternal life. Lord Jesus, I thank you 
for your shed blood to redeem me. I thank you. You took away my unrighteousness so that I may be clothed with your righteousness. Thank you for paying the price for my sins. And this day, I receive your righteousness. I receive that price you have paid for me. I thank you that I am your own. Fill me with your spirit. And from this day forth, I choose to serve you. In your name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, I want to hear from you. I want you to write me at OCNPO Box 45465, Los Angeles, California, 90045. Amen. And we want you to tell other friends about OCN. Tell them to watch us. Go to our website. It's right there at the monitor. It's ocnbroadcasting.com. And we have a large YouTube. You can see other programs even after it has been aired. So go to the YouTube channel and, and look up OCN Broadcasting and you can watch many other programs. But tell others about OCN. This is your favorite Christian television. And while you are at it, as the Lord lays in your heart, talk in a gift to OCN. Amen? Mm -hmm. And your life will not be the same. Amen. I know this. God loves you. Amen. And so do we. Until next time, shalom. Amen. Shalom.